everyone, welcome to another Harp at Home workshop of myself, Rachel here. We're on our fourth series and this is our third workshop. It's the first part of our fourth series. Of our fourth series. We're going to have four workshops before the Christmas holidays and then another four in the new year. So we've started our journey on the road. I'm incredibly grateful to Tasca for helping fund this fourth series. Um, and it's been allowing me to leave the confines of this spare room, leave the old trusty fireplace for a few, for a few days. And um, I've been taking you on the road uh, to meet some people who are kind of part of my, of my journey as a musician. Last week, we were with Cheyenne Brown. And today we're gonna to be going just along the road from Cheyenne actually to Dingwall to meet Fiona Dalgetty, who is a director of Face Ross. Now we're gonna learn in a wee minute about what my connection is to Face Ross and how that kind of connects to my story as a musician. But um, as ever, do remember to subscribe if you're a YouTube user. Um, please uh, do like the Facebook page and share any videos that um, I put up. Uh, it's been great actually to hear um, from folk around the world who've been taking part in this fourth series again. So do drop me a line if you're enjoying what you hear. And um, we've got another four workshops, or another five workshops, one more next week, which will be the last one for the holidays for this part one, and then another four, as I said, in the new year. So I let's get straight to it. Um, we're gonna head in a minute to Dingwall uh, to speak to Fiona, but I'm going to have a wee blather to you first about what my journey is and how facials are connected to my journey with this. So, Face Ross, what is Face Ross? So today we're going to be meeting Fiona Delgetti and she's the director of Face Ross. And Ross is referring to Rosshire or Ross and Cromarty, which is the area of Scotland. It's in the Highlands, I guess you could say it's in the kind of middle of the Highlands. It stretches right from uh, the kind of part of, of the Highlands where I'm from, from Ullapool down to Gearloch and Pool you and Otbay, um, then it also encompasses the um, Easter Ross and the Black Isle area, which is where Cheyenne is. So stretching over nearly kind of into the East Coast, along with Cromarty, Firth, etc. And the word fish is the Gaelic word for, for festival. But when we refer to it, we often refer to a fish in, in Scotland as being um, a kind of tuition festival, I guess. You have lots of fashion. You have fashion and Gale, who are the parent company and or the parent organisation, and lots of areas around Scotland have their own fish. And Fish Ross was my local fish, and I guess my connection to them started when I was very wee, and um, I was sent along to the local fish, and. I got to choose various instruments and um, you had to choose three and I could never decide between pipes and clarsach. I had one best pal who played pipes, I had another best pal who played clarsach and I eventually settled on clarsach and got on really well and then um, continued after that to get weekly lessons. My mum and dad must have spoken to the fish. I don't actually know what they did, I should really ask them. And um, the fish uh, had a teacher, Phil Taylor. Who we spoke about last week um, who taught at um, Ardival Harps actually they used that as a workshop space and those workshops were organised by the Fish. So not only did they introduce me to Clarshach in the first place but they provided me with the opportunity to learn weekly. Something that just would not have been possible because the Clarshach at that time was really a very rare instrument. And it's not that common now but certainly back then it really wasn't that popular. And so I've got a lot to be grateful then, but I guess more than that, um, they used to have these the kind of weekly, kind of weekly long kind of tuition kind of residential weeks, and those were a huge part of my bringing up. Um, they inspired me as a musician. They made me want to play with other people, learn tunes. Uh, it was the whole kind of culture around it, the social aspect of it, that really inspired me to kind of keep playing and to really start to love this music and um, so I've got a lot to be grateful for them. They really do fantastic work so we're going to speak to Fiona about the work that she does um, 
but aye, let's head over and we'll, we'll chat to Fiona now. Hello, so welcome to another wee kind of interviewing bit on the road of Harp at Home and I am here in Dingwall with Fiona Dalgetty from Face Ross. Now, Fiona, we've known each other for a long time. We both used to go to the Face when we were little. So can you, can you explain to folk what the Face was in our younger days, if you know yeah. what I mean? Goodness, I think we both went to the um, music week in October, Rachel, in yes. the 90s in Gairloff. <laughs> so scary. Yeah, so, yeah Face Ross is probably most well known for its residential music making courses. Yes. And in an ordinary year, we would have um, a week at Easter for primary school pupils and a week in October for high school pupils to come together. And then our big adult learner weekend in May. And it's just an amazing opportunity to come and learn skills in music for people who've never had a shot of an instrument yeah. before through to kind of quite advanced players. Yeah, I mean, that's how I started off playing the Clarsuff was, um, I think when I was in primary four, I always thought it was P5, but my mum told me a while ago, no, it was primary four, you were allowed to go early because you lived in Ullapool. And I, that's when I first tried out Clarsuff with Karina Hewitt and Kirsty McGregor and kind of then got, like said, well, would you like lessons? I said, okay, so got lessons through the face, but it was always that week in October that you were at and there was like folks like yourself and people like John Somerville, the boys from Croft number five and all the, you guys were always a little bit older than me and playing in the sessions mm -hmm. and seeing people who were kind of my age group playing tunes really fast and it just, yeah, the kind of, the inspiration that I always got in that one week was just really the whole, special. Um, the whole social aspect of it was so important totally. outside of the workshops, you know, like just hanging out with your new pals yeah. from across the county that yeah. have the same interests as you. It's exactly. Really and learning the tunes and like group work, the big group work when we used to do with Terry Small and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was epic. Like, yeah. And I used to, we were talking with Kim Richards, she was saying, oh, I remember the days of facial, so you'd be bawling your eyes out at the end. I know. Like, and then getting a calendar and counting down the dates. The <laughs> exactly. Next totally. And I used to always like drive my friends and I'll pull up the wall because I just used to talk to them about it constantly and they'd be like, again like, but it's a really special time and when did you so you kind of went to faith what what did you do after high school did you go on and do music or were you I kind of not. arts no so I we we've just this weekend a couple of days ago had our first in-person event in Ullapool uh -huh. for since 2019 and it was interesting that you mentioned Karina because she yes. was teaching at the weekend uh, no and Karina was one of a small number of people who took part in the very first face rush yes. in 1986 um and at the weekend, it was 30 years of the adult face event in oh, particular. Wow. So I'd commissioned Ian Fraser to write a new piece of work. And when I was announcing that piece, I was like, 1991, that's the first year I came to Face Rush. So 30 years, Rachel, I've been involved in some way or another, <laughs> like reason, ever though. since. So I was like a primary four Highland dancer uh -huh. who came to the pool and then left a fiddle player. Um, and yeah, when I left school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I... Um, I went and taught English in China for a year. I remember, yes, I remember you doing that now. And then oh, when wow. I came home, I uh, still didn't know what I wanted to do. And my predecessor, Rita Hunter, gave me an admin job in the office um, for a second gap year. So I was here three days a week, uh -huh. just helping with admin. Um, and her friend Brian was setting up his own business, so I did two days a week for him. And then I went to Edinburgh University to study Chinese and then to Gaelic as my outside subject because mm -hmm. I'd become so passionate about all things Chinese and thought I yeah. should learn more about my own um, culture and then eventually graduated with a degree in Celtic studies, not Chinese, because yeah. it all switched. <laughs> yeah. And then you've ended up coming back here. When did you start being the director of the face year? 2009. So we've been That's here for it. quite a long time. Goodness, that, yeah, it just seems, I remember when you, because I, I think I was teaching at one of the face and when you were kind of, or someone's just like, oh, Fiona's in charge. I wonder what we, what changes will happen. And the face has really kind of gone from strength to strength. It's not just about the residential things now, is it? So what kind of other kind of things have you had going on in the past, like, 10 years? Yeah, lots and lots of growth, I suppose, um, but quite organically. So yeah. because people like ourselves have kind of got older, we've continued to just find opportunities for those people to remain involved whilst taking new people in all the time. Um, so we have our weekly classes programme that we've just restarted Excellent. on a small scale in person. So we've got Bill Taylor still teaching Clarsa. Yeah, first teacher. Um, so we've got 15 classes a week at the moment in Dingwall. Um, 10 for children and young people and 5 mm -hmm. for adults. And, and I guess one of the big things that I did was 
it really struck me when I got the job that the biggest event in the Face Rosh calendar was the three-day adult face in May. And it was the only thing the organisation did for adults. Yeah. All year. So um, we got some funding to pilot a year round lifelong learning programme and that's kind of gone from strength to strength and largely funds itself now so we do lots of work with adult learners and and there's been a beautiful community of people that have become friends and they've set up a community band called Fish the Music and they oh, raise money for us and it, yeah it's amazing um, yeah and that and we've had quite a few big commissions that's a new thing since I've arrived I suppose so um, John Somerville wrote a piece inspired by the voyage of the Hector um, a ship that left Liverpool in the yes, 1700s yes. And then Lauren McCall wrote a piece inspired by the life and prophecies of the Brandseer. And then most recently, we've just the world premiere was on Friday night of Ian Fraser's new commission, um, which is all inspired by the people and place and geology and landscape of Dingwall and Gearloch and Ullapool. So you're, you're really kind of investing in telling the kind of cultural stories of what, like, because we've got in Scotland, we've got Fashion and Gale, we've got the different fashion that happen around Scotland and Fash Ross is the one from Ross and Cromarty mm. which is this area where we are in the kind of Black Isle area and stretching into where I'm from in the west coast and Ullapool and yeah you're really kind of diving into the kind of cultural and the history and kind of telling it through the music Yeah and we're really keen song. to do that, yeah. we do a lot of work with schools so um, our education manager Rachel does a pound of work mm-hmm. in, in schools and that's interesting you mentioned Fashion and Gale so we're a member of that membership mm-hmm. organisation but Face Rosh is quite unique in that from day one, we start, in fact, we started as a Ross and Cromarty District Council mm-hmm. project. So we've always been funded and we've always had staff. And the grassroots network of Fashion across the country are much smaller and run by yeah. volunteers. Um, so it's quite quite different from that point of view. And and I guess our work now reaches beyond. So if there's an area of Scotland that doesn't have a local mm-hmm. fish we'll be qu- and there's a bit of interest, we'll, we'll work and, and support those communities. So Face Rosh delivers traditional music workshops in every school in Dumfries and Galloway, for example. So you're just kind of like, where there's not the volunteer there, you're kind of starting, helping to start things up and yeah. get introduced into traditional music. And since yeah. we started the schools programme in Dumfries and Galloway, that kind of generated community interest, uh-huh. and now they've started their own community fish. Oh, fantastic. Which is lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, yeah, helping folk getting going. That's, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, Face Rosh, I've got so much to be grateful for Face Rosh, because like, the organisation gave me the first chance to try the Clark stuff, and then... My weekly lessons with Bill Taylor, and he's still teaching. But he's still just teaching amazing. Us. He was so patient with me and my friends when we were little. I don't know how he put up with us, but yeah, kind of yeah, very special kind of memories of the fashion and all the stuff that you do. So, and we'll of course put links to the kind of music and the work that you do. And do you and the adult fish It's it's all open to folk from around the world, isn't it? So yeah. folk can come, and you quite you'll often have class tuition. I've myself. Yeah, we had Wendy Stewart this weekend. So oh, normally yeah. it's always the first weekend in May, mm-hmm. the May Bank holiday weekend. Um, but because we'd missed it in May 2020 and May 2021, I didn't want to wait three Yay. calendar years. So we just did this one-off winter mm-hmm. one. But it'll be the 29th of April to the 2nd of May 2022. Um, and we always have Clarsach. We usually have two Clarsach yeah. tutors, so we've got different levels. So we just had Wendy Stewart there. Um, Last yeah. weekend. So it's, it's a fantastic thing to go at. If you if you want to combine a trip to Scotland, now I always tell you about the Edinburgh Heart Festival, folks, but certainly if you're wanting to do things beyond the heart, it's a great way of getting to the Highlands, mm. getting a little bit of tuition, getting to see some wonderful concerts, because you always have concerts and sessions kind of programmed as well. Totally. There's a big fringe programme around the classes. Mm. So there's three days of workshops and then um, talks, recitals, concerts, pub sessions, yeah. all of that. So we will link to in the website and the Facebook page and social media of Face Raw so you can explore more. But yeah, thank you so much. It'd be really nice to catch up and to see that you're still standing after the first in-person weekend of work. And nice to meet you in our still empty office, but hopefully yeah, not empty I've for never, too much longer. I've never actually been here before. It's just always a place that you send stuff to and kind of email. So good to kind of see and see the artwork actually of Sorley's in person from uh, the kind of Hector and everything. Yeah, yeah very special pieces. Good. Well, thank you very much, Fiona. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. Great to reconnect uh, with Fiona there as part of uh, this Harp at Home on the Road series. Um, yeah, the tune we're going to do today is has got a wee bit of a connection with Face Ross. It's called Antal Tundu. And I guess the first time I ever actually heard this, um, or I learned it as a song, so it's a Gaelic song from Rosshire. 
and when I learned it, I was at Faceoffs. Um, I think it was one of the senior Faceoffs in um, Gearlock. It would have been one of the latter ones. I was kind of trying to remember which one. And at every Facean, when it's a residential one, there's always a Face song. So everybody learns a song together um, and they sing it as part of the concert at the end. There's always a big concert at the end where you, uh, where you get to uh, like perform with a class that you've been doing all week and um, you perform one of the tunes that you've been doing and your folks come to it and everyone claps and everything. But the finale is always the fish song um, and this is one of the songs that we learnt. The thing was though, <laughs> I, would, I, would learn, I would be learning the songs all week and then get to the finale, could never sing it because I'd be bawling my eyes out because I was so distraught at the fact that I was about to have to leave the fish and go home, that it was all over for another year. So and this is one of the songs and it's called Antaltan Do. Now it's from Russia and it's it's called the Black that translates as kind of like the Black Stream or the Black River, the Black the Black Burn. And um I think the river that it's talking about is actually called Antaltan Do, the Black River, which is um just by Garv, which is on the A835, which is the road from Ullapool going down to Dingwall. So it's going down through Rosshire. And it's a road that as a youngster I travelled all the time on. We used to, when we were very little, the village had no swimming pool. So we'd go to swimming lessons in Inverness every Saturday morning. So we'd be up and down that road. It'd be about an hour to get there. Um, and uh, latterly, when we, I used to go for my Clarshock lessons um, in Strathpeffer through Fishos, I used to be driving down that road to over the Black River. And my brother as well, he used to get fiddle lessons in Edmonton. So again, we'd be down that road over the Black River. And the Black River um, is just by garb. And when it's full, it gets quite kind of, it gets really quite big and it's got lots of currents and stuff. In fact, actually, we took some footage here of it. Uh, we stopped on the way down the road uh, with Sam and it was uh, the morning after a lot of rain. So there was, the river was quite full. And so this song was written by Donald Fraser, Donald Fraser, who was from the Loch Broom area, which is where I grew up. Um, but he was a gamekeeper in the Fannis, which is kind of that area kind of not too far from Garv. Um, and in the song, so he, he was known as the Fannich Bard, actually, because he was kind of known for kind of writing songs. And there's still quite a lot of his songs around. I think this is probably his most famous one, actually. Um, and in the song, he's talking about the fact that the river is really full and um, there's a flood in the black stream in the black river and he can't go across it and he can't go across it in order uh, to shoot the deer to shoot the stags and he's got his gun with him that he calls Morig <laughs> um, and he just can't get over because the river is so full. Now around this time when this song was written there was a big a year of a lot a summer of a lot of floods in 1843, particularly in the Garv area. And it was the Black River and Dalton Do um, that burst its banks and caused a lot of damage. Like, there was a big landslide. There was a lot of crops were uh, lost, houses were lost. There was a huge big flood even in Garv itself at the big hotel. The big hotel is still there. It's, it used to be bright pink. I can't remember if it's bright pink now, but it was like under four foot of water and stuff. So it was a really kind of big, year for just terrible storms and a lot of just bucketing rain. So we think this is when this song was was written around that time or that it's at least referring to that time in history. So Donald Fraser, he died in 1880. Um, but this song is, is, is really popular actually. It's written in 2-4. Now we've got to kind of look out for this. In, in your music, I've provided you the kind of source melody, which is written in 2-4 and that's how we kind of feel it almost. But you can kind of feel that it's got a waltzy feel to it. So I've actually arranged it and written out the arrangement in 3-4 because I think visually it's a little bit easier to follow that way. Okay, please do look at the link so to listen there's a few kind of versions. There's a version of a singer singing it and then also of a Kayleigh band called Meantime playing it. Now the way that they're playing it is as a Gaelic waltz and a Gaelic waltz um, is you would play Gaelic waltzes at Cayleys, um, so it's kind of almost like a kind of freestyle Cayley dance, I guess, the Gaelic waltz. Um, you have at Cayleys, you have all your, um, like your Dash and White Sergeant and Strip the Willow, etc. 
and then you have your Gaelic waltzes which is when the band just play a load of kind of lovely Highland waltzes sometimes there'll be a singer who'll sing them as well um, and this is one that kind of gets used every now and then for them and people just waltz around the floor um, it's not a formation dance so it's more freestyle so it's used a lot as a Gaelic waltz and I guess that's kind of how I've, I've arranged it a bit for you you can kind of feel the three four in it as well so just be aware about that when you're uh, watching the workshop but of course you need to listen to it first so we'll head over now and we'll give it a listen together <laughs> And I'll turn to, um, hopefully you like the sound of it. Um, I also have in the music, just to let you know, a harp two part. Um, I know that a lot of you have kind of returned to playing in your harp groups or with your harp friends now that we're allowed to mix a little bit more. Um, so I thought I'd do a harp two part for you to try um, if you fancy playing it with a friend. So do consider that. Um, I let's head over to the green screen now and we'll learn it together. Let's have a go at learning this Bonnie tune eh, from Roshar and Alton Du. Your harps need to be in G major. So for me, I have my harp in E flat major. So I need my E, A and B levers engaged as well as my F sharps for G major. If your harps in C, you'll just need your F sharps engaged. Alrighty, so this tune um, goes chorus first, chorus first, chorus first, etc. etc. We're treating the chorus as part one. So that's the first two lines on your music. And the verse is part two, which is the next two lines in the music. We've also got your intro, which you can see is marked, marked right at the start as the intro. And then we also have a break section, which is intro again, and an outro. And um, we'll look at those at the end um, once we've kind of learnt this uh, arrangement. So this tune is kind of a bit of a stream drum because it's kind of written out. It's kind of thought as being in 2-4, but it's got a real swing to it, which has a kind of indication that it's almost a waltz. So we kind of go on one, two, one, two, but it kind of also goes one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. So it's kind of like, it's like a 2-4 with a bit of a kind of chilled out swing to it. Um, so yeah, kind of watch out for that. When I'm counting in, I'm mainly going to be counting in one, two, um, but there might be times when I kind of go one, two, three. So just kind of be aware about that. Hopefully you'll manage to kind of catch on with what I'm playing um, and we'll be able to play together. So I'm going to play your first part and then we'll get started at the melody. So we have our thumb on 
in E, second in D and third in B. Now something to note in this is that in the melody we're not going to be using any F sharps at all. Okay, We will use them in our left hand but stay clear of those Fs at all time. We're going to start off by playing down from E, D and B, one, two, three, on there. And we're going to turn around and come back up. We're actually going to cross under to the G, A, B and keep going all the way until we hit the high E. So we're going down from the E to the D, turning, coming back up and going all the way out to the E. Okay, missing out that C, missing out that F, but playing that C. One, two, three, going down. I'm going to count in. I'm going to count in one, Two, then we're going to go and one, okay? One, two. Turn and come back up. Cross your third under to G, A, B. Third under to C, now C, D, E. Did you hear that cut at the top? When you're playing your D and your E, you've got a nice little snap. Okay? After two, let's give it another go. One, two. One more time. One, two. Lovely. Now, when we hit those three notes at the top, we're actually going to, at them as we're playing our E, we're going to preset our second and our third back onto the D and B, ready for our next section. Have a listen. You see how there, as I'm playing my E, I'm placing my second on D and my third on B. Let's give that a go. I'm going to count to two, one, two. Lovely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work our way down to the E, avoiding the C and the F. So we're going to stick to all the white notes is another way of looking at that. We're going to go down D and B, cross over with our thumb onto A, second on G, third on E, and I'm going to snap between the A and the G. Have a listen. Hear that? So let's place our second on D and third and B again. We're going to go down, cross thumb over to A, G and E. Nice, I'm going to count to two. Let's see if we can get that. One, two. Well done. Let's go from up from the C. Okay, so that's the tail end of our bit when we're going up. I'm going to count to two. Got a snap and then we're going to work down to the E. One, two. One more time, start from the C. One, two. Excellent. Let's add on the bit before. So we're going to go down from the E all the way up to the E and we're well, we're coming back down to that E. After two. One, two. your thumb on the G. Have a listen to our next bit. Thumb is on G, third and D because we're going to have a snap with two Ds here. So I'm going to use my thumb on G, third and D and afterwards we're going to use our second to do the second D and that's where our snap is. Let's give that a go after two. One, two. Good. Pop your thumb on D and we're going to play up. B, D and E. So we've got our thumb on D. D, B, D, E. Let's try that after two. One, two. Good. Let's go for that together. So we've got G, D, E. After two, you ready? One, two. Cross your third under now to the G. 
and your thumb place on the C ready to start our next phrase. Okay, did you get that? That's quite a lot of stuff going on. I'm not sure how well I under uh, got you understanding that. G and two Ds. Then pop your thumb onto the D again. So that means you have three Ds in a row there. And then up, B, D and E. We're all sticking just the white notes here, folks. Cross your third under to the G. Play your G, but hold on to your C just now. Let's give that a go together. One, two. Go for it again. One, two. Good, our thumb should be on the C now and we're gonna go C, B, D. So it's like a little bit of a turn there. Thumb and C. Then our B, D, and we've got a snap there. Let's give that a go after two. One, two. Put your third on A. And then B, G, G. Did you get that? So I had thumb and C, second on B, going C, B, D. One, two. Pop your third on the A. It should be third on A now. We're going to play A. B and two G Gs. Okay, so thumb is going to be playing the G, or th sorry, thumb's going to be playing the B, and then we're going to play two Gs with our third finger and our second finger. Pop your third in your A, let's give that bit a go together. One, two. Okay, so have a listen to that bit. I'm going to count myself in, play it with me if you want, but I will do it for a second time in a second. One, two. C, D, A, B, G, G. Let's go for it again. One, two. One more time for good luck. Why not? It's a wee bit tricky that bit. One, two. Done. So let's go from our G and our two Ds as a snap, yeah, and then D. I'm working up all those white notes. Are you ready? From G and two Ds. One, two. D, B, D, B, G. And now our new bit that we just did. Nice one. And two Gs. Yay. I think you're doing good. <laughs> Let's give it another go though. After two. One, two. One more time for good luck. One, two. first part. If remember we go down from the E, then we're crossing under all the way up and we work our way down to the E. Yeah? Okay? Mostly pentatonic. We've got the C in the way up though. Okay, dokie. Let's go for it after two, our first part of an Alton do. One, two. play you the second part. One, two. Bar, 
part can be clearly split up into four phrases, four lines as you would, um, of the song. And I, it's not got a lot of repetition in it, but it's got some nice little wee patterns and I think you will be fine. Three, two, one, on B, D and E. So we're higher up. In fact, we're using the same notes that we started with but an octave above. And we're gonna be going up though, and then down. Have a listen. Okay, so let's have a go at that. We're gonna go up and straight back down. Gonna to count to two. And again, the B is the upbeat. One, two. Good, after that, I'm gonna add on A, G. So I'm gonna cross over to do a snap there. See if you can do that. At the end, I want you to cross over and play A and G. One, two. In fact, let's play two Gs. And another G with your third finger because that's how it goes. <laughs> let's give that a go. So A and two Gs at the end. D to B after two. One, two. A, G, G. So totally pentatonic that little bit. Well done, that was our first phrase. Have a listen to our second phrase. Less pentatonic here. Second and G and thumb and A. We're going to have some double notes in this. We're going to play G and A. So we're going to go G, A with two and one. Move your second finger after that to the A that you've just played. Your thumb to the C. We're going to play A, C. So we've got G, A. Let's give that a go. One, two. A, C. Lovely. Now we're going to have to widen our hand out for this because we're going to use our C, our thumb on C again. And our second's going to go down to the E and our third onto the D. Now, it's quite hard to place those on. I tend to place my thumb on my second. Then as I'm playing my thumb, I then place my D. So I'm still connected to the, to, to the harp. Have a listen. And another D at the end of my second finger. So we have a snap there between the E and the D. So we have our C, E, D, then another D, but that time with our second finger. Are you ready? Let's give that a go. One, two. Reset, go again. One, two. Nice one. So when it goes together, I'm going to count myself in, join in, but as ever, I'll repeat it. G A A C. One, two. Give it a go with me, folks. G A A C C E D D. One, two. For a third time, lucky one, two. Good. Let's add on the bit before. Remember, we were going up from B to E, and then we had the snap A G and an extra G, and then we start that bit. So actually, it means you have three G's in a row there. Let's give it a go. Line phrases one and two. That's line three in your music of the melody, at least after two. One, two. G A, A C. Nice work. Go for it again. One, two. G A, A C. Lovely. We're going to stay down there. Pop your third finger in the D. So we're going to play another D here with our third finger and our thumb is going to go in G because we're going to play this. Have a listen. It's like a little mirror bit. We're going to go D, G and then the reverse. G, D. You ready? Just using three and one. One, two. Now with this bit, you might want to use your third finger again or you might want to swap to your fourth finger because we're going to go D, C, B, A. So fourth and on D or third if you want, to be honest. Pop your thumb on the high C. We're going to play the low D. 
Then play down three from that C. One, two, three, C, B, A. Let's just try those four notes. G, C, B, A. One, two. Good, let's add on. D, G, G, D. You ready? One, two. One, two. Nice one. Have a listen to our next bit where the last little bit. Classic ending here. Starts off with less classic. Thumb and D, third and A because we're going to do a D with our thumb and then play a snap with three, two in the A's. Give it a go. One, two. And place down one, two, three. And surprisingly enough, we're going to play down B, A, G. And an extra G at the end. Let's do that. B, A, G. After two, down we go. And two Gs. One, two. Good. Let's go. Your D and your snap. You ready with your two A's? One, two, and down B, A, G. Well done, that's your fourth phrase, your ending phrase. Let's go for it again. One, two, B, A, G, G. Good work. Okay, folks, let's go for that kind of the final line, the fourth line in your music there of the melody. From there. Yeah? Put these two new bits together. Are you ready? After two. One, two. Down three from C, B, A. D in your snap and your A's. B, A, G. Good, let's go for it again. One, two. Let's see if we can go from the start of it. So remember we had up and down, then A, G, G, then your G, A, then A and C, kind of little steps there. And then widening your hand out, C, E, D, D, and then the bit that we just did. Okay, let's give it a go. We'll give it a few goes though. And remember, you can always pause and rewind and re-watch at your leisure. One, two. So B, D, E, up we go. One, two. we can play the whole tune, see how it goes. <laughs> Do you remember your first part? You were going down from the E to the B, missing out that C, missing out the F, up from the C, then going down, missing out that C. <laughs> Lots of kind of bits to grab onto there. G and two Ds is the snap, and then D, B, D, E, G, C. Then you had your wee bit here, which was going, I'm finishing on B and two Gs, yeah? Let's give it a go, the whole of that first part. Remember, pause, rewind and rewatch um, if you need to. Whole of the melody after two. One, two. Up 
in the B and straight back down again. Snapping in the A, G. So, let's start the left hand. Um, I'm going to play you what we're going to be doing for our first part and then we'll take it in little stages. So we've got a mixture of kind of chords and things going on, mainly G's, C's and D's. Um, in fact, I think all G's, C's and D's because we're in G major. Have a listen. classic kind of stuff going on here. I'm going to start off with well, a pattern that we've used a lot at harp at home, a G chord extended. So it's your G, D and G. We're right down in the bottom of the harp here. G, D and G. Hopefully you can see that okay. We're going to be playing up this, crossing our second and our thumb under to the A and the B. Okay, so this is why we cross and um, push our fingers down and our thumbs up so we can clearly cross under. I'm going to do that with my right hand so you can see what I mean just in case you're not familiar with that. So I'm going up, crossing under, A and B. Okay, let's have a go at playing that together. One, two. Okay, so this is going to go with our first little bit when we're going down from the E and back up. Okay, listen to how it fits in. It creates a nice little harmony actually. So the G, D, G part of the chord is going to come with the D. And as you're crossing under, we're actually going to have the A and the B right next to each other because they're going to play together. So you have to be careful here. And then our last note is going to go with the D of our right hand. So the B and the D together. Together, together, and you've not yet played that thumb on the E. Are you ready? Let's give that a go. One, two. Together, together. One more time. One, two. Lovely. Our next bit of our melody, our left hand, is going to go with the G, A, B. So the E of that bit comes by itself. We're going to play that E by itself and now we're going to have the next left hand coming in with the D, dum, B. What we're going to have there is another G chord. I'm going to show you with my right hand so you can see. G, D, G. I'm going to play up that. Then I'm going to use my second on the F to do F and G. It's quite a little pretty little thing, isn't it? like this. So our G chord, the bit where we're going up, is going to go with the G, the F with the A of the melody, and the G with the B of the melody. Again, creating a nice little harmony. Let's just play that together. We're not going to play the bit together, I'm going to count to two before that, sorry, and I'm going to count to two. One, two. Okay, you need to watch out to not buzz that thumbnail like I did there, did me, after two. Let's go again. One, two. Brilliant. Let's add those together. Now remember, that thumb there is going to have no left hand with it. Always look out for these little kind of wee bits that you can grab onto to help you learn putting these hands together. After two. One, two. So G with a D. Harmony. Now G with a G, F, and then G. One more time together. One, two. Good. Now our next little bit, we're just going to do a C triad, and it's going to come with the D. Okay. With 
with the D, a C tried to make it nice and flowy. Are you ready? C tried with the D, so the C there comes by itself. One, two. Good, when you're crossing over with the A and G, we're gonna have a D octave, so right in the middle of the harp there, thumb on D, fourth on D, high D, and then low D, so we're splitting the octave. That's coming on the snap of the A and the G, the first one, so our thumbs come together. And on the last note of that section, the E, we're going to have that D. Let's just try that bit together. One, two. One more time, reset. One, two. Good, lovely. So, let's go from the C triad bit, remember it comes to the D. One, two. D and D. Good work. Let's go from the start. G extended and the G chord with it, F, G at the end, C triad and D ought to split going down the heart. Are you ready? One, two. to the next bit, we're going to have a G, one, five, eight, then another G extended. Okay, so we're going to have a, just a one G, one, five, eight, which we're going to brush, and then we're going to return to the same chord that we had at the start, the G extended. So our G, one, five, eight brush is going to come with our Ds. Let's give that a go after two, folks. One, two. Good. And as we're coming up, B, D and E, like we did kind of before, except we're a little bit, we're kind of a little one note out here. We're going to have our G extended. The G part of it is going to go with the B. Or sorry, with the D. Okay, then we're going to have the A with the E. And the B with the G. So it creates a nice little harmony there. Okay, so you had there, we had a G158 with the double Ds. As we're coming up here, we're going to have the G chord with this D here. Cross under, A and E together, B and G together. Let's give that section a go. One, two. Good, and our next bit, have a listen. G158 right in the middle of your harp, so the higher one. Middle C's in the middle there to give you kind of context there. Brushing G158, brushing D158, and then finishing off with another G158 extended. So a lot of similar patterns in this. G158, D158, working our way down to the G extended. Have a listen to how that fits in. The G's going to go with the B. Starts with the first G, and the last note of the chord goes with the last note of the melody. So we're at da, 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 da. Do you know where you are? Hopefully you do. G with the B. So after two. One, two. Now your third should be an A in your melody. We're going to have that D with that A. Let's see if we can do that. One, two. One more time. One, two. Good. We have our B by itself. Then our G extended, same chord that we've been using. Starts with that G. Left hand continues until the last note where you have your last G. Yeah. Let's give that ending phrase a go. One, two. Extended, providing harmony again. Then 
Let's, let's give that bit a go. You're doing well, folks. Well done. One, two. Good. Okay. Let's see if we can get all of your first part left hands. You had your G extended. And then the F and G. C triad. And then your D octave split in the middle of your harp there, the high of your D octaves. Aye, let's give it a go. Are you ready? One, two. C tried with the D. D octave with the A, G and the E. G chord with the Ds. Here's the G extended. Providing nice harmony. G chord, D chord, and G extended. Have a listen to the next bit. when I was playing that second part, it's like, is that what I'm doing? It is what I'm doing. So we've got a nice little pattern here. We've got one of my lovely descending scale patterns. You'll have seen this. I've used this technique in a number of arrangements. I'm going to show you with my right hand so that you can see, folks. Okay, but we're obviously doing it with our left hand. Starting off with a G158 in the middle of the harp. G, D, G. So middle C's in the middle. I'm going to play up that. I'm going to keep D and G constant. And we're going to go F, D, G. So you have G, D, G. Drop your fourth to the F. And then we're actually going to play an E and then a D octave. So we're working down there. G, D, G, F, D, G, single E note and D octave. Okay, let's see how these go. They're going to go with the long notes pretty much, okay? So our G is going to go with a D. And our F, D, G is going to go with the D in the way down. So remember that with the Ds for this bit. Have a listen. The D with the D. You ready? Let's give it a go. One, two. Brilliant. Crossover and you're going to have a single D or single, sorry, E with that A. And then a D octave with the next G. Okay, so we've got an E with the A, and with the second G, a D octave. Let's add that in. One, two. Nice, one more time. One, two. A C triad with our A's here. So our second phrase, remember where went? We're going to have the same kind of left hand that we had at that point in the first part. We're going to have a C triad and then a D octa split. But let's go for lower D octa split actually this time. Okay, so the C triad is going to go with the A. You've got to be a little bit careful there. Okay, and then our D octa split with the E last of the D's there. Can you see how that worked? See if you can make that work with me. C tried with the A's, low D with the E, and low D with the second D. You ready? One, two. Reset, let's go for it again. One, two. Good. Let's add that on to what we have. One, two. Single E, D octave. C 
try it now. Do, D, and low D. Lovely. We're going to have four 1 5 8 chords in a row here. Is everyone going to show you in my right hand? I'm going to go up an A, and then B, and then next C, and D. Okay. What you want to be kind of doing here is trying to do your damping and slide a little bit so that they don't interrupt the next chord. Have a listen to how this is going to work out. Remember you've got D, G, G, D, then D and down from C. This is where it's going to happen and it's going to go with a long note, so it's every second note. Let's give it a go together. So it'll be with the thumb, so with the G, with the D and with the C. Okay, are you ready? And then with the final D as well. One, two. With the D, with the high C, D with the A. After two. One, two. Lovely, classic ending. We're going to have C, D, and a G extended. So four, five, one chords. Uh, C one five eight brushed. That's chord four. Chord five is D brushed, and then ending up in the root chord one G extended. So this is gonna go C with the snap, D with the B, and like your last bit, G chord starts with a G and ends up with a G. Let's give that a go. So it's gonna come with the C with those snaps and the A, D with the B there. Okay, after two. One, two. And G extended. Nice, one more time. One, two. Good, let's go from our ascending one, five, eight patterns, A, B, C, D. You ready? D, G, G, D. One, Two. Okay, pretty cool. Let's go for all of the second part then. Remember you've got your G, D, G, F, D, G, E and D octave, then the C triad and the descent, uh, um, split octave Ds but in, in the bottom of your heart. Aye, give it a go. Remember, you can pause, rewind, rewatch if you need to. After two, the second part. One, two. Oh. One, two. So let's, let's see if we can do the full arrangement, then I'm going to take you through the intro break and what else I kind of do as you would have heard in the recording in front of the fireplace. So remember you've got your G extended and your G, F, G bit, C triad, D octave split, and then you've just got a brush G, G extended, then G, D, G extended. Cool. You will be good, I promise you. After two, one, two. C tread. T octus. Split. A. 
that's your full arrangement. Um, I'm going to teach you the kind of intro and the outro bit. So it's the intro, break and outro actually. The outro has another wee bit in it. So it's a really kind of pretty pattern. Have a listen to it. having our right hand I want you to pop on a B and a G. Our left hand is going to be on the G chord, right in the middle of the harp. What's going to happen is our right hand is going to go B, G, B. After every left hand chord pretty much it's going to go up. We're going to use that kind of descending pattern that we almost had in our second part there. I'm going to play up a G158, B, G, B, like that. Okay, so up, B, G, B. Ready? One, two. I'm going to do it a little bit slower. One, two. Good. Drop your fourth finger to the F and go up. Then you drop down to the E, still D, G. So you're going G, D, G, F, D, G, E, D, G. Let's try it. I'm going to count to, th I'm going to go one, two, three for this. One, two, three. octave in our left hand. Okay, so that's what that pattern is. Then you do it again. But brush a D158 with a D triad at the top. Okay? And that makes your intro and your break. Okay? And the way I played it actually was I had my intro round once like that, then I had once through the tune, then I did my intro again, and then I played the A part up the octave and then the B part down the octave. Okay, just a little kind of we kind of differing thing to make the tune twice as long, but it still sounds really quite sweet when you move it up the octave. These again are all ideas that you can use on your own arrangements. So we have intro, tune as it was, intro again is a break. A part up the octave, B part, second part even, down the octave. Then the outro does that pattern again. The full one. Then it starts it again. And for the actual ending, I'm going to still stick to the B and G. My left hand's going to go up a C158. At this point, I slow down, so I'm going to go C, G, C, then B, G, B, okay, B, G, B, and then up A, E, A, and then G, 158 is brushed in both hands, okay, so that last section went up a C chord, B, G, B, A, 158, And that's just, yeah, a kind of extended kind of outro section and it just kind of makes the tune complete. So, yeah, get ready and we'll play it all together by the uh, fireplace, as usual. You know what it's like. <laughs>
you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed learning that today. So that's us. Yay! Three tunes into the series four of Harp at Home, On the Road. You've got to remember the On the Road part for this uh, four series. And yeah, it was so, it was really great to see Fiona again. Um, I remember Fiona from when I was wee and when we were at the face together. She was always a little bit older and always kind of playing with the, in the sessions with the older ones. And it's just great to see an organisation that um, really is responsible for me and for me playing the Clara stuff. If it wasn't for them, I would not be here doing this at all. Um, yeah, it's just really great to see them flourishing and doing so well just now, even in the midst of a pandemic. So yeah, good times. Nice to be in Dingwall as well. I haven't been in Dingwall for a while. So Dingwall is where um, we used to go for our Clarshock lessons at Ardeville Harps. Um, remember how we were meeting Cheyenne last week? Um, so at their old workshop in Strathpeffer. And then afterwards we would go to Dingwall to get lunch. We'd go to Dee's the Bakers and I would get a ham and cucumber or maybe it was, no, it was just a ham roll, ham and butter roll. Um, I did go there the other day. Sadly, they're not so much into plain ham rolls anymore. It's all the kind of fancy kind of whole grain with little seeds on them and things, which is very nice. I did buy one, but um, alas, yeah, not got the old school ham roll. And I don't think they even had ice buns. They had all kinds of amazing uh, kind of uh, buns and things, but not, not their kind of plain ice buns, which is what we used to get, dearie me. So, yeah. This is a blather section. Oh, and as you might have been able to tell, this is not um, this is not my spare room. This is not the fireplace. This room is worth many hundreds of times more than my spare room at home. Um, I'm actually this is the second workshop in a row now that we've really done a harp at home on the road, and once again we are in another country, no less. Um, I'm out in the Netherlands just now, where I am. I'm teaching at the wonderful harp shop in Renan. Um, Renan is, I'm going to say it's in the west of the country. I think, no, no, it's in the east of the country. Oh my goodness, it's near the German border. Um, and this is just, it's just an epic harp shop. You might have tuned into a workshop last um, season. Um, or was it last season? No, I think it was season two. Because I managed to get out here in September last year. I remember that. Or maybe it was November. I can't quite remember. Anyway, I got here and I did a little bit of filming from here, um, but it was certainly more summery than this. In fact, yes, I was remembering I was wearing summery clothes. I'm not wearing summery clothes today. I'm wearing my fur-lined boots and a, a thermal tights and I've got like three layers on here because it's really quite chilly. So this is an amazing harp shop in Renan that has, oh my goodness, I don't know how many how many hearts, but it's such an epic place and it's an epic place to teach as well. I'm the resident Scottish harp tutor here. I say resident. I come over I come over here usually around six or seven times a year. Um, or that's what I'm aiming to. Yet to get to that because I started halfway through 2019, 2020. Well we all know what happened then and then this is my third time this year, but I'm not gonna get to seven times this year, that's for sure. Um, but I teach in the wee room out back there and I've got some wonderful students and um, I have regular students then I have people who can who come to kind of fill in the gaps for one-off lessons so if you're either in the Netherlands or if you're nearby in Germany actually uh, and you fancy a lesson let me know and I'll try and uh, I'll try and squeeze you into my timetable so loads of different harps as you can see um, yeah actually let's take a wee minute and um, I'll give you a wee tour here we are in the harp shop. Quick wee tour. What we got? Let's see, we'll start over here actually. Yeah, loads of music and a Salvi. Uh, Salvi, is it Lion and Healy Delta? I can never remember. They're technically the same company, I think, just now. Um, but yeah, Delta harp. Pretty bonkers harp, electro harp. I can't quite get grips of it, I have to say myself. Um, all the Salvis over there, you can see kind of lined up. These harps are fab. These are Peppy Weisberger's harps, the Seraphins, etc. Beautiful small harps. Now, there was a whole load of these were just delivered on Monday. I don't think they're going to be here in January when I come back. I really want one. I really, I like this one here, this walnut one. I think they're honestly the best lap harps I've ever come across before. So good. And so many of my harp teacher friends in the Netherlands have got them and I'm so jealous. Um, and these are his Arios harps. 
I really like this cherry one here. I tried this one earlier. Played some tunes in it. It's really nice. More salvies. Mini salvies. And then these things, these big giant petal hearts, which are just giant. This is, I think this is brilliant. It's like huge, 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 big heart, little teeny, teeny, really, really tiny harp. Huge, big petal harps. And the little, little teeny harps. <laughs> so look at that one. I mean, that one's like gold on it. They're bonkers, Lion and Healy won that one. I wish I could kind of like tell you more about petal hearts, but I don't really know that much about them. I played played pedal for a while at uh, university. I played in the orchestra, did some Bernstein and things, some fun things, but I didn't really love it enough to take it up seriously because it's a big investment, isn't it? Yeah, tiny little hummingbird harps. These are really cute. And they also have levers on them now, which is pretty neat. Just a few. And then, what do we have here? I think it's another Lion and Healy. Lion and Healy, oh, the Lion and Healy's. Including their, well, yeah, their new one, the Drake. This red one, which is, yeah, biocarbon, whatever that means, I'm not sure. I think it's, yeah, something good about climate to do with the strings or something. I'm not too sure. I should look it up. And then, oh, the Killarney Harps. You know, I've got one. I played one for you last week, actually. So... And Dusty, trusty Dusty strings. Dusty are, I have to say, I really respect Dusty. They're such a huge company, but I just love that they've got the small person ethos. Ray and Sue and everybody, just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, there you have it. The Harp Shop in Menon, where it's really hard to come and not spend money, I have to say. I earn it, but yeah, just... I mean, I just want one of those little harps. They're so cute, aren't they? Maybe one day, one day. Hi, so lovely to be out here. Lovely to be reunited again with students. Um, I had a bit of a, <laughs> I don't know if I should admit this. I had a bit of a nightmare day yesterday. So, well, no, not yesterday, the day before. So I normally come on Thursday. Well, I used to come on Thursday evenings. And I would come and I get picked up by my good friend Jos, Jos at the airport and I go and teach him a lesson at his house. He owns a shop so he can't come here um, when I'm teaching. So I normally give him a lesson and then stay at another heart teacher's house and then kind of get a lift here. But things have changed um, a little bit and now that I go out, it's now decided I go out Thursday morning and I teach several people in that area actually and then I get the train to here on Friday morning to teach. Um, so that was the plan. That was really definitely the plan and I thought it was the plan until on Wednesday night um, I decided to check into my flight about 10 o'clock at night, quite late on I have to say, and realised that no, I had not changed my flight from the evening flight to the morning flight. So I sadly had to cancel a student, um, which I felt so bad about. Managed to squeeze my other two students in. Uh, this morning and yours last night once I arrived in the country but yeah it all became a little bit messy because you have to take a LFT or LFD antigen test before you come to the Netherlands within 24 hours of departure time and I'd taken my LFT at about 1pm thinking I was getting the flight the next day at half past 10 but alas I was getting it the next day at half past five so by the time I decided, I realised that I was on the later flight, I'd already taken my antigen test. So I therefore had to take my spare antigen. Now these are all ones that are connected, that are connected to travel certificates. So it's not the free ones you get at the pharmacy. And so there's, they're ones that you have to load on with a booking reference and you get a certificate. And I meant to do one here in the Netherlands before going back home to Scotland. So I had to use that one instead to get my certificate for flying. And then in the meantime, I had to run into town and go to a private clinic and get another one to replace that one. So yeah, I did a lot of running about and I did a lot of testing. Um, so I have a test now, which actually after this, I must remember that I need to take. Um, and yeah, it's all a bit of a hoo-ha just now, as I'm sure you're aware, it's a kind of, yeah, getting into winter months, things getting a little bit trickier. Um, I was hoping to tell you about my concert that I've got um, next Sunday. Um, I was really looking forward to playing with Ron, but unfortunately it's been postponed until May because of the kind of situation just now. So 
it's I don't really get upset about these things anymore. I don't know if that's sad. But I'm just I'm I'm a little bit worried about the next few months. I don't know. Like I'm kind of I think we're all kind of done with this. We just wanna kind of you get your hopes up and you get things in down and it's like, all right, great, managed to kind of have something to work to towards, having something to really kind of play towards. And this was gonna be well our our concert the other week was cancelled because of the storm. And again, to have this other one cancelled is yeah bit frustrating so that's been a bit of a rubbish kind of thing that was found out just a couple of hours ago actually aye but um what else yeah i mean looking forward to christmas that's that's one of the reasons the concert has been cancelled everyone's being really cautious just now and with good reason to be honest um i'm moving my own private students uh who i have been seeing face to face onto zoom this week because i'm aware it will be within the 10 days before christmas and Everybody wants to be okay for uh, Christmas and there's new rules that with the new variant that we have to isolate for 10 days no matter what um, if you're in contact with someone. So it's just a little bit risky. Everyone's taking care because they want a normal Christmas or a normalish one. And I'm excited for that. I'm going to stay with my folks and I'll see my brother and sister-in-law, which will be very good. And yeah, um, I, I am blathering away. I'm having my drink of tea here. Thank you, as ever, for tuning in, folks. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to tell you about. I mean, it was the concert. Oh. Do uh, check out um, the rest of the workshops, actually. If you're behind in workshops, remember, all these workshops are always going to be up for you to watch, so you can just catch up at your leisure. Um, and remember to subscribe on YouTube. That really helps other people discover and if you fancy sharing the videos I put off on Facebook on the Harp at Home Facebook page, that would be great. So yeah, huge thanks again to Taskiv for providing me with funding for the On The Road section and to Sam Hart for his wonderful videography skills um, up when we were with Fiona. And I am going to head upstairs and chill out for a while, load more pupils tomorrow, then train to Amsterdam through Schiphol Airport and I'm gonna to go to my usual favourite restaurant there, the Asian restaurant they have, get my chicken satay <laughs> and then get in the plane home and then test tomorrow morning, isolate until I get my result and yeah, consider what I'm gonna do for the next Harp at Home. I've got an idea of a tune, I think you'll like it actually, it's a really nice one. So take care folks and I'll see you next week for the the final part of part one of this four series we're going to take a break for the holidays and we'll see you after yeah well in the new year i guess so yeah take care of yourselves and i'll see you next week